A few months back, I completed my Voron 0.1 build, which was by far one of the most complex 3D printer builds I have done to date. From the printer's really small components, to a motion system I wasn't very familiar with, to uh, Clipper firmware, which was brand new to me at the time, as well as just a lot of silly mistakes on my end, getting that printer built and tuned was no simple task. That being said, it was also very rewarding and I learned a ton along the way. And on top of that, the Voron 0.1 has been a beast for me. I've used it for some rapid prototyping. I designed my little filament cleaner on there. My new Raspberry Pi uh, snap in place for the Pi 2.0 was also uh, completely designed on that. And one of the main reasons is that it's able to print parts two to three times faster than a lot of the other 3D printers I have just due to its sort of over-engineered aspect of it combined with the Clipper firmware. And it prints ABS like nobody's business. I think at the time of recording this, I've clocked something like 150 print hours so far on that Voron 0.1. Now, around the time that I was finishing up my Voron 0.1 build, LDO announced and released a complete kit for $650. And Knowing that I spent a lot more than $650 on my build, I was really curious as to how it would stack up against the Voron that I self-sourced. Well, a little over a week ago, I finished my second Voron 0.1, which was based off of LDO's kit. The entire build was live streamed over on the ModBot Army YouTube channel over the course of a few weeks, and I will link you guys in the description over to that channel as well as to that playlist if you want to subscribe. We are going to be doing a lot more weekly live streams over there. And all in all, it was a total of roughly 20 build hours, and that was with a lot of talking and a lot of pointing different things out, but the experience of building this second one was a lot smoother than the first one, which of course was partially due to me having now uh, some familiarity and knowledge I didn't have initially, but there was also quite a few elements of the LDO kit that helped to streamline the second build. So in today's video, we are gonna be covering the Voron 0.1 LDO kit versus my self-sourced version. We'll cover things like the pricing, some of the different components, and then just kind of my overall experience of what you get going the kit route versus going the self-sourced route. And the ultimate goal here is to help you decide if you're planning on building one of these, you know, which is going to be the best direction for you to go. There's definitely a lot to cover. So with all that being said, and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Before diving into today's video, I did want to send a massive thank you over to Fabrico. They are the ones that provided us with the uh, LDO Voron 0.1 kit and made the live stream series possible as well as today's video. They are a US based company and if you are looking to pick up one of the LDO Voron 0.1 kits or if after watching you ultimately decide you want to go the self source route, they carry a ton of components for all of the different Voron builds and they are also very active over in the Voron Discord. So I will place links down below over to their website where you can find out more or pick up one of these kits for yourself. Starting off, I wanted to briefly touch on the reason I even went the self-source route initially. And if you haven't seen the uh, why I am building a Voron video, I will link down below in the description. But the main reason was that around the time I decided to build a Voron Zero was right around the time the Voron 0.1 was released. And with that was the mini afterburner tool head, which was a direct drive tool head. And I knew it was something that I wanted along with the beefier stepper motors and quite a few other upgrades, but the mini afterburner was certainly something I thought was attractive. And due to it just being released, there, there just weren't kits available. All of the kits that I saw on the market were either for the original Voron Zero or there was like a Voron 0.05 that was kind of like an in-between the Voron Zero and the Voron 0.1, but there wasn't just a full kit available at that time for a 0.1. As one does when they become obsessed with a new printer or a new build, I did a ton of research and I ended up joining the Voron Discord initially and based off a few conversations I had as well as just doing my own research on prior conversations, the general theme that I got was that not many that have been involved with Voron or have built many were too jazzed by kits. And the main reason for that was that the quality of components in these kits were a lot of times inferior or subpar to the things that you could self-source yourself, as well as some of them just not being as up-to-date based off of the latest versions of the Voron you're building or based off the components recommended in the BOM, which could ultimately lead to an inferior product, which is your end printer, or just a very frustrating build, which are certainly two things that I can understand. So based on those two factors, I decided to go ahead and source everything myself. And I hopped over to the official bomb on Voron's website and 
I had set aside a pretty good budget, so that way I was able to order quality components for the most part, and I allowed myself to get a lot of spares, especially on things like the different hardware aspects of it, especially like the M2 screws. I knew I was going to strip them, and on the first build, I stripped a ton of them, so I am very happy that I took what was required and got way more than that. Even with my budget and my research, I ended up accidentally ordering some really cheap belts that I ended up having to get swapped out because they were deteriorating very quickly, as well as an incorrect number of bearings, which basically led me having to put the kit off to the side, or not the kit, but the build off to the side, and wait an additional two weeks for my next shipment to show up from AliExpress. And somewhere around this time is when I first heard of or discovered the Voron 0.1 LDO kit. And the first time I got to actually see it was on Nero's live stream where he built the entire thing in one day because he is a madman. And uh, that, I, at that point, I started doing a bit more digging into it and the LDO kit really seemed to be the first kit that I officially saw where many, many people, even established people within the Voron community, seemed to give the LDO kit their stamp of approval. Now that leads me into the first reason for why you might wanna go with the kit over going the self-source route, and plain and simple, it's cost. The LDO kit right now goes for around $650, and it has everything that you're going to need to get up and running, other than ABS to print out the parts, the, the printed parts that you'll need for the build. And so, $650, and I went ahead and added up what I spent, and it was close to $800, and that was with me already having a Raspberry Pi, already having the Dragon Hot End, as well as Big Tree Tech sponsoring the SKR board. Had those three things not happened, it easily would have been an additional $100, bringing it up to $900, or roughly 50% more than the LDO kit. That being said, I did not exactly bargain hunt on all aspects. If I had been a bit more patient and I had really looked for, for certain things on sale or just really researched, I might have been able to shave off some, but I can tell you right now, there is no way I would have gotten it down to the $650 price tag. And one of the main reasons for that was just shipping costs. Shipping was brutal having to go from so many different sources and specifically on the stepper motors, the only method they had for shipping was like DHL, a pretty, pretty, high tier of DHL. So just to get the motors, the shipping on those was like 40, 40 to $50. So that is a huge element of it is the cost. On top of that, I easily spent an additional 50 to $80 on tools for the build because I I didn't have any really good crimpers. I ended up having to get a couple of good sets of crimpers, one for just like standard DuPont connectors and one for the ferrule connectors, as well as all of the actual little crimps themselves. So Another big plus is if you if you don't already have that stuff, the LDO kit comes with a wiring harness, and so you don't actually even have to have any of the crimping stuff to you know make your own wiring harness. Now, I did talk to a couple of people also within the Voron space that has been building things a lot longer than I have, and it does sound to me like with everything else, things are the most expensive they have ever been right now. And so if we were having this conversation, maybe one or two years back, it might have made a lot more sense financially to self-source and those cost differences might have been, you know, there might have been less of a gap between them. But I do think just throwing it out there that cost is important and for many people, the 50% roughly savings of going with the LDO kit is probably gonna be reason enough to go that route. The next reason to go with the LDO kit over self-sourcing is just all of the little bonuses that they included with their kit. For example, the linear rails that came with the LDO kit that are stainless steel were definitely higher quality than the ones I initially sourced from AliExpress on the bomb. Not only were they uh, nicer quality, but when they showed up, they weren't covered in a thick goop or, or grease. They did have, uh, of course, some form of lubricant to protect them from traveling and protect them from rusting, but I didn't have to do any initial prepping to get rid of all of that grease that was on them from the factory. And all I had to do was basically install them. And when the build was entirely done, I added a bit of uh, lubricant to them to just kind of help preserve them for the long haul. But that was really nice. Also, the linear rail mounting bars, if you go to build the Voron 0.1, there's these little printed nut traps that you need to print out. You basically shove a bunch of M2 nuts inside of them. And it was a huge pain on my first build. I had issues with them not wanting to slide into the 1515 extrusions because I had a tiny bit of an elephant's foot and the tolerances were so tight that it was a nightmare to get in. And I uh, broke one or two in the process while 
The LDO kit just comes with these little metal bars that slide in perfectly. They've already got threads in them and everything lines up and bolts in quickly. And that alone probably saved me a couple of hours um, just right away in the build. The RTV glue or gasket on the LDO bed is a really nice bonus as well. You don't have to worry about the adhesive uh, on the silicone heating pad kind of starting to sag or lose its adhesion after so many heat and cool cycles, especially if you're doing a lot of ABS printing. And also the things like the little set screws for the stepper motors already have thread locker on them. So you don't have to use anything like Loctite, um, which again, it's just small things, but in the grand scheme of it, where there's so many things to consider when you're doing this sort of small meticulous build, they all are really, really nice. I will say that out of all the upgrades, the two things that saved the most time though were again, those metal bars for the linear rails and the wiring harness. Those were two elements that both took me hours initially that ended up taking me mere minutes because of the fact that everything is already prepped and ready to rock and roll for you. The last main reason I'd say you'd wanna go with the LDO kit over going the self-sourced route is in an attempt to try to eliminate as much human error as possible. I mentioned that I had accidentally ordered very, very cheap belts instead of the Gates belts that I thought that I ordered. And I also some, somehow misread the bomb and only ordered half of the bearings needed for the motion system. And when I was doing the build and I realized that I went into my own personal stash and they are pretty standard bearings. So I grabbed some, um, some other ones that weren't the exact same ones, which seemed to have a slight deviation that I didn't notice at the time, but it ended up causing a massive problem in my motion system. Now, is this, com is this my fault completely? Absolutely. If I had just paid more attention, you know, I, I could have prevented this. But when you are looking at a spreadsheet of lots and lots of different things with many different sources and you're trying to figure out, you know, do I get it from AliExpress? Do I go to DigiKey? Do I go to this vendor, that vendor? There's just a lot more moving pieces. And when you go with the LDO kit, it should have everything you need in one package. There's just such, such less to consider and think about. And you know that these things have all been tested. Now, of course, there's always a chance like anywhere when you order a kit that maybe their kit's missing a component, but I'd say the chances of that happening are a lot less than you, again, ordering all sorts of different things from various sources. And so having all of these things in this kit already, knowing that I don't need to think about anything else, just need to organize things and build was really, really nice. After building both printers, I definitely lean quite a bit more heavily towards the kit side of things. Uh, but there was a couple things with the self-source route that was, was a positive, and I did want to touch on those, although, both of these things are very easy to just incorporate into the LDO kit. And the first is just spare parts. I ordered quite a few spare parts on all the screws and nuts and bolts because um, one, you know, I knew that I would probably lose some, I would probably strip something, I would probably wanna do a mod or two and having some, you know, various components like that seemed like a good idea. And the LDO kit does come with everything you're gonna need, but it definitely does not come with as many spares as what I've got. Like. I guess the shake test doesn't do much, but this is this is the LDO and this is mine. Yeah, that doesn't do anything, but um, this weighs a lot less because there are some spare parts that are included with it, but just again, not nearly as many. The, the solution to that would be just if you think you are going to want to have some additional things, maybe order a set of extra M2 screws or maybe order an extra end stop if you think that's something that might get damaged. And, uh, again, the having the spare parts was really nice. Like the the magnets, I ordered a ton of magnets initially, although the build only needs a couple of them for the door. I was able to incorporate them into the uh, utility belt mod that I did on the first one. So it's things like that. But again, just because you're going the kit, it doesn't come with them by default, doesn't mean that you can't just add on screws or order screws, you know, as needed. And the second big one for me was when it came to the wiring. So the initial kit that I self-sourced, or the initial build that I self-sourced that was not a kit, I had to create my own wiring harness, which again, cost a lot more because I had to get all the crimping stuff for it. And it took a lot more time. Uh, it was some serious, probably hours of crimping things, but I, I would say that my cable management looks pretty damn good. I'm very, very pleased. I, I definitely say pat on back for the, the wiring job. While the LDO kit comes with a harness, and so you don't have to crimp anything. You just plug things in, plug into the board, and you're ready to rock and roll. 
but there's a lot more slack on their wiring harness. And I would definitely argue that they give you like a wire channel or wire loom type thing that you put all the stuff in and then close it up. It doesn't look nearly as good as the, you know, doing it yourself route. But that being said, you also are going to be throwing a back cover on it and it kind of hides it all anyway. So <laughs> their method, their, their wiring harness is certainly more effective and will save you hours of time. So if you don't like crimping things and spending your time on wiring, it is definitely a good route to go. Also, just because the LDO wiring harness has some slack on it, doesn't mean that you can't also cut those wires, strip those wires and crimp those wires shorter, and you've already got half of them done on the other end. So, you know, again, my both of my arguments for why you'd probably want to self-source uh, or, or why you may want to self-source are really applicable to the LDO kit and still tend to make a lot more sense. The only real reason I can think of in my head on why you might not want to go with the kit at this point is if you've got a really, really unique build in mind. Like if you've just got like so many different things going on that's going to be completely custom that it just, you know, dollar wise doesn't make sense, then yeah, maybe that's one of those scenarios. But with the LDO kit, you're getting quality components. You've got your, you know, different choices for the anodized aluminum, and you still get the customizability of whatever colored printed parts you're going to do. So I just, you know, again, unless you've got a really, really specific vision for your Voron 0.1, like I just don't really see how you, it seems tough to justify going the self-source route. And that has been the self-source Voron 0.1 versus the LDO 0.1, both very different experiences. I very much so enjoyed both builds, but again, the, the LDO kit was just way less expensive. The end, the end result, I mean, when I ran some of the uh, tests for the input shaper and pressure advance, the, the LDO kit actually was performing better than the initial kit I built myself, which was sort of mind blowing to me, but, yeah, it, it's been a lot of fun. The live stream was great. There was a lot of people hopping in, sort of, you know, telling me that they were also waiting for their LDO kits or they were building their Voron along with me, which was a ton of fun. And I am really hoping to get the LDO switch wire kit in. I would love to build another Voron. And based off my experience with this kit, I am super excited to see what that is all about. So let me know in the comments down below what your thoughts are. Um, how many of you are building or have built a Voron 0.1 and which direction did you go self-source versus the LDO? And if there's anything I missed in terms of benefits of going the self-source route, I'm always you know, up to debate or up to hear other ideas. So let me know in the comments down below and I would love to hear your thoughts. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel furthermore, I will place links down below in the description over to our Patreon, where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of my existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot, and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.